Hello, my name is Bill Kinney and this is part 29 of my series of videos about parametric curves. We've been focusing on modeling the trajectory of ball and this is part 8 of that subseries. We've been focusing recently on the fact that the derivative of the position vector, its rate of change, is the velocity vector. These things are functions of time. I'm going to continue emphasizing that in this video and I'm also going to talk about how the derivative of the velocity vector, its rate of change, is something called the acceleration vector. We'll go down here, you can look at the situation we are modeling, the trajectory of a ball under the influence of gravity, no air resistance. And we're using Mathematica, this, this is a Mathematica notebook, to animate what's going on here. Here is the ball as it moves. That's the black dot. The black curve is the par parabola, that's the trajectory of the ball. The blue arrow is the position vector of the ball at any moment in time, in this case about 2.756 seconds gone by. The dash brown arrow is also a position vector for the motion, but 0.25 seconds into the future because I put a 0.25 right here. And the red arrow is a scaled down version of something called the velocity vector. The velocity vector is, a, is an arrow that when you put its base at the location of the object, points in the direction of motion, it is tangent to the curve, and has a length equal to the speed. I've scaled this down by a factor of four. It's four times shorter than the velocity vector. If I get rid of this 0.25 here, then I will see the actual velocity vector. This vector has a length equal to the speed at every moment in time. It is a changing vector as well. It changes both in direction and length, though the length change is a little hard to see. Um, and we're gonna see that, that, that the velocity vector has a derivative too. It has a rate of change. Um, go back to 0.25 here. In the, at the end of the last video, we emphasized this approximate equation down here. Let me make some changes to this that I realized I should have made to begin with. I should change all these A's to B's um, for two reasons. One is I've always been calling the animation parameter B. And a second reason is since I'm starting to talk about acceleration, I'm going to want to reserve the letter A for acceleration in this video and in future videos. So let me change all these A's to B's. That's the moment in time we're talking about. These things are all functions of t, and I'm thinking about a particular moment in time, b. Let me make these bold faces as well. Okay, let's look at this approximate equation. Um, delta r, I'm saying, is a vector that points uh, from the tip of the blue arrow to exactly the tip of the brown arrow. v of b is the velocity vector, which I already, already talked about. Delta t is the change in time which we're imagining to be small, and in fact we're imagining to be 0.25 in this case. What delta t does is it scales down the velo velocity vector to be this red vector so that you get that good approximation here. You can think of this approximate equation in, in another way that's sometimes often useful. Um, you can think of it as a way of approximating the velocity vector. I can take the approximate equation and in effect divide both sides by delta t to get this approximate equation. What I'm really doing there when I divide by delta t is I'm technically, officially, um, multiplying both sides by the reciprocal of delta t. One divided by delta t is being multiplied on both sides to get this, but I'll go ahead and write this as a fraction anyway. You should keep in mind that if delta t is small, like 0.25, then one divided by delta t will be big. big. If the delta, t, the delta t is 0.25, then 1 divided by delta t is going to be 4. This is saying, in that case, that the velocity vector is approximately 4 times larger than the position vector when delta t, the, the change in the position vector, when delta t is um, 0.25. I could scale this up, get rid of, make it the actual velocity vector. If I multiplied the change in position by 4, it would get a scaled up vector approximately equal to the velocity vector. What I want to do now is show you something quickly on Mathematica first, and then we'll talk about the acceleration vector. What I want to show you is that Mathematica is even more flexible than you could possibly imagine. In particular, I can make my paraplot here depend on two animation parameters, a b and an h. An h is going to represent delta t, essentially. I picked the letter H here because oftentimes calculus books use H in place of delta T. So I'm going to enter that code with the new animation parameter H. Got to put it down here in two spots as well. 
I'm going to let h start at 1 and go down towards 0. I'll go, let it go down to point 1. And now my animation has two animation parameters, both a b and an h. b represents time as before, time going by. h represents how much into the future the brown arrow is from the blue arrow. They're both position vectors, the blue one at time b, the, a, the um, brown one at time b plus h. And now if I let h go to 0, watch what happens. The brown arrow, arrow and red arrow have their tips go together. They converge. That's a nice visual for this approximate equation. Okay. Now we want to talk about the acceleration vector. The acceleration vector is the derivative of the velocity vector. I want to illustrate that by redoing this code a little bit. Um, I'm going to want the brown arrow that I drew before that represented a position vector before to now represent a new velocity vector, h units of time into the future. Um, to do that, I need to make some changes. I want velocity vectors to be located not starting at the origin, but instead starting at the point itself where the ball is. So I'm putting a c of b in here. I want to put a c of b plus v of b plus h right here. And let's see. I think I want to get rid of the h that's right here, actually. I want this to always be the velocity vector, not a scaled down version. I think this is going to do what I want. Let me copy and paste this as well. OK, so now you see something different. The brown arrow now is based at the location of the ball as it moves, instead of on, at the origin. It is the velocity vector, in this case, one second into the future. The red arrow points tangent to the motion in the direction of the motion. The brown arrow doesn't. It is, again, the velocity vector one second into the future, because h is 1 here. Um, that should make sense because the velocity vector is rotating clockwise, so this brown arrow should be pointing further down. If I now let h go to 0, watch what happens. The brown arrow and the red arrow converge together. The change in the velocity, therefore, would be an, an arrow that points almost straight down. If you went from the tip of the red arrow to the tip of the brown arrow, that would be the change in the velocity vector over this interval of time. And it points almost straight down. That's a reflection of the fact that the acceleration vector points exactly straight down. Because, from physics, the only force we're considering here is gravity, which points exactly straight down. Can we restate this in terms of the velocity vector? What I'm going to do is I'm going to change all the r's to v's. Hopefully I find them all here. I'm going to change all the v's to a's. And this statement is still going to be a true statement. Bear with me here, almost done. I hope I haven't made any mistakes anywhere. Let me, I'll look this over. OK, so now we're supposing we have a function v of t that's smooth on its entire domain. That first statement really is no, effectively no different than this first statement. We're just using a different letter. But I am thinking of these vectors as being different quantities. I am thinking of this as being a velocity vector. The value of the derivative of v at time equals b, denoted by v prime of b, is what we call the acceleration vector at that moment in time b. And in this example, that points straight down. In general, you essentially define the acceleration by this equation. The acceleration vector is the derivative of the velocity vector. What does this mean geometrically? It means that if we change t by a tiny amount from time b to time b plus delta t, then the change in the velocity vector is well approximated by the product of the acceleration vector with delta t, just like before. So now the acceleration vector points straight down. From the tip of the red arrow, it would point straight down. The change in the velocity vector might not point straight down. It certainly looks like it points straight down. And to think about that, maybe it really does. The change in the velocity vector 
points at least approximately straight down that goes from the tip of the red arrow to the tip of the brown arrow. And you're going to get an approximately equal to here, or a, maybe even an exactly equal to in this case. Talk about that more in the next video.